Right folks, welcome back. Um, we talked last time about the relative rate, about why you might need it, how to calculate it, and the slightly odd units um, that we're dealing with here. Um, just the other day, when it was a nice sunny day, as it is frequently these days, I set up an experiment with my son. We went out of the back garden. We had ourselves um, a tube uh, can, that we bought from uh, the supermarket with uh, false teeth cleaning tablets in it. And we put a precise volume of water in the tube. We dumped in one of these little tablets, sunk to the bottom and then started fizzing. And then we fired the cap on, uh, clicked the stopwatch and retreated to a safe distance. Feel free to try this yourself. It's great fun. The advantage we had, of course, is we had a thermometer. So we could measure the temperature of the water. You can do that possibly with a food thermometer as well. They're accurate enough for this job. Um, and we had a whole bunch of different temperatures of water. These were the times and seconds it took to blow the lid off. By the way, if you're going to do this, I seriously suggest you put some sort of cover over this because the first time we did it, we lost the lid uh, until my eagle-eyed wife managed to find it. Um, so these are the temperatures, these are the times uh, and we can calculate the relative rates. I, I'm sort of tempted to go and get you to do this. I'll be honest with you, as a challenge. In fact, you could easily pause this video right now and go and calculate the relative rate using that equation that we discussed last time, where relative rate is equal to one over the time it took. In maths terms, by the way, one over something is called the reciprocal of it, if you ever come across that. And the units will be the reciprocal of the units as well, which will be seconds to the minus one in our case. And so uh, you can pause the video here and then go and do these calculations yourself. See what you get. Okay, if you're back or if you're too lazy to go and do the calculations yourself and you haven't paused the video, then we're going to run through the numbers now. In fact, do you know what? I'll just, it's boring watching me write numbers. Let me pause it here. And we're back. Okay, so here's, as if by magic, to quote Mr. Ben, Oh, you're way too young for that reference, of course. Um, as if by magic, we've got the numbers here uh, for relative rate. And uh, you notice I've rounded them all to four significant figures. That's just for comparison purposes. So, I mean, mentally, this is effectively the same as 1250, 769, 526, 303, 160. You can see that obviously they are decreasing with decreasing temperature. That's what you told me from National 5. Um, however... There's a couple of other details that we need now uh, and higher. Uh, and what we're going to do is we're going to sketch the graph of this because you need to know what these graphs look like. Um, so we're going to have uh, rate versus temperature. Um, and I'm just going to sketch graph it because you can do it in a computer. Trust me, it turns out this way. We didn't fake these results, believe it or not. And they are textbook correct because you get a curve that goes pretty much like that. Um, now, this, my slightly dodgy drawing, might look at, look at, might make it look as if it's completely flat. It is not. It's still continuing down. It's just getting slower and slower over time. So this is not a straight line graph. Nowhere near it. It's not meant to be. This is what's called an exponential graph. It's shooting upwards. Now, um, there's a couple of things about this graph. Number one is the fact it's a nice curved line. Number two is the fact that at zero degrees Celsius, it does not intercept the axis. So that means there is still a small rate at zero Celsius. Of course there is. Zero Celsius is still a temperature. It's just we think it's a bit chilly. But reactions still carry on at these, at these temperatures. Just as a very brief side note, by the way, if any of you have a good general knowledge, logically, that means eventually this would intercept somewhere. It would hit the zero rate at a certain temperature. That's called absolute zero, minus 273 Kelvin, which is a proper temperature scale. Uh, we should all be measuring things and why is that? What's wrong with Celsius? Well, you need to know what temperature actually is because um, it just sits there looking all innocent. Oh yeah, temperature's how hot or cold something is. Isn't it? No, it's not. Um, temperature is actually a measure up here in the real world, the big world, of how fast atoms are vibrating at down in the microscopic world. We feel that as hot or cold, but it's actually just the speed of vibrations. Uh, and if you chill atoms down, they vibrate slower and slower until you reach a point where they don't move at all. And that, of course, is absolute zero. So the idea of a negative temperature is actually nonsense, since temperature is a speed of vibration. 
So how fast atoms vibrate at? That's what temperature really means. We will come back to that because that will be important in the very near future. That's why I'm going into the detail. But anyway, let's have a look at the rate curve. You get this nice curve. That's rate versus temperature. It doesn't quite intercept on the zero line. Um, and we'll go on to look at a second variable that you told me. Um, if you remember from the first sheet, uh, you did, you told me this. Temperature, concentration, surface area, and catalysts. So we're going to work on number two now. So this was relative rate against temperature. Um, I don't have any numbers for this one, um, I'm afraid, because the experiment that I tried to do failed totally. Um, so I'm just going to cheat and go straight to the graph. Here's what the graph would look like if I had some numbers for it. So we're going to have rate versus concentration this time. And that would be in moles per litre. And this would be in seconds to minus one. I think I forgot to put the units in the last uh, graph. Feel free to throw fruit at me when we come back to school. Um, so what does this one look like? Well, this one is now a straight line. Um, unlike, unlike rate versus temperature. Um, also, it goes right to the zero point. Now, this makes much more sense than the last one, because if you think about it, at zero concentration, though, you've got no molecules to react, so the rate is also zero. Um, that's it. Far less interesting than this one. Um, if you're good at maths, you will know that this is called a linear uh, function, and that means if you double the concentration, you double the rate. Nice and simple. Interestingly, back to this one for a second, you see that doubling the temperature can actually more than double the rate. And that gets more and more important as you go up in temperature. We'll have a look at why these two should be so different to each other. Because um, so far, we've never actually answered the question of why. Why does increasing the concentration speed up a reaction? There's a good question. And that's what I'm working my way towards. Um, so let me check and see what I've done so far. We've talked about relative rate. We've talked about um, how to calculate it, its units. We've talked about the shapes of the graphs you get if you change temperature and concentration. Um, there is one more graph I'd like to mention just before we leave the graphs behind. Because um, there's quite a few graphs and it's easy to get mixed up between them. Um, I'm going to do the scales in blue for this one because we're not changing a variable here. What we're looking at here is rate versus time. So I, I'm going to ask you to pause the video and have a wee think about what this graph would look like. You might want to think about time here. This is time, by the way, sorry. Time being the time through the chemical reaction. So um, would the rate start off high or low? And would the rate end up after a long time high or low? And how do you think the graph might look in between these points? So you can pause the video now and go and have a wee sketch in your brain. See what you think. Take 30 seconds to consider it. Okay, we're back. Um, and at zero time, the rate starts off really high. And eventually, I suppose, it's going to collapse down to zero. So when you finish your chemical reaction, something's run out. One of your ingredients has run out. But between these two, it looks like this. So that's rate versus time. Now, what that means, by the way, is that chemical reactions quickly drop off and then take forever and a day to actually come to zero, to end themselves. You've probably subconsciously noticed that. Remember when we used to drop magnesium strips into acid, it would fizz really violently at the start and then the fizzing dies off very quickly and then it slowly trickles bubbles for ages at the end. That is the physical manifestation of this graph. And I think I'm going to stop the video there because um, we have covered relative rates, we've covered the graphs of uh, how the rate changes with temperatures, how the rate changes with concentration, and last of all, how the rate falls off over time. Uh, in the next video, we're going to tackle why this actually happens. Okay, thanks for listening. Bye.